The new Windows 11 2.4 H2 update is going to require new installations of it as well as clean installations like when you reset your PC to set up BitLocker encryption by default. Now, this is currently a feature that is inside of an insider preview for Windows 11. So this hasn't rolled out to the general public yet, but if and when this does, the BitLocker encryption requirement could cause a lot of data loss. Now, let me explain what I mean by this for those of you that are more blissfully unaware of the Microsoft ecosystem. BitLocker is a proprietary full disk encryption solution for Windows, a full volume encryption solution for Windows. And I believe it was introduced with the enterprise versions of Windows Vista or possibly Windows 7. And I think the ultimate versions of those OSs had it as well. Now, like any other full disk encryption program, BitLocker protects the data on your hard drive from being stolen or accessed by someone who has physical access to your computer when the device is powered off. Of course, if it's powered on, then you've already bypassed BitLocker encryption. Um, because without it, without any kind of full disk encryption on your computer, someone could remove the drive from your laptop and then mount it on another PC or they could boot into your same PC with a live OS, like a Linux USB drive, and then they could just copy all of the data from your hard drive to their external drive or, or some other device. Because the user account password in Windows or any other OS for that matter does not prevent copying your data off. Only full disk encryption does that. So if you really care about digital privacy and your threat model involves someone getting physical access to your machine, then full disk encryption makes a lot of sense. Although you really shouldn't be using a proprietary encryption method or a proprietary OS for that matter, if you really care about privacy. And well, that's kind of the point of all this. Most people who use Windows don't care about data theft, or at least not in the context of having their device stolen and then having data taken off the hard drive enough to bother with using BitLocker encryption. In my experience, both inside and out of Geek Squad, the people who used BitLocker competently were people using their computers for business work. And they were using BitLocker to secure those important files. So yeah, that makes sense for those people. But a lot of my Windows clients were using their PCs primarily for leisure activity, browsing Facebook, watching YouTube or Netflix, maybe send the odd email here and there and edit a document from time to time. But the idea is they're doing the kind of stuff that doesn't create sensitive files on their PC that a bad guy might want to steal their laptops to access in the first place. Like, maybe a bad guy could get their Facebook or Google login cookie and then do some bad stuff with access to those accounts. But nobody is going to risk getting caught up in a physical theft just to get into some old lady's Facebook account. I mean, they could do that through all kinds of other remote means. And this is probably the logic that Microsoft was using back in the Vista in seven days by just not even offering BitLocker encryption on the home editions of Windows, right? It was only on the enterprise and ultimate versions, if I'm remembering correctly. Now, the real tragedy of BitLocker started when Microsoft stopped treating it like a feature reserved for the business folk, and they started trying to push it on everyone, which now they're taken to a whole other extreme because it used to just be when you're using, I think they started doing this in Windows 10, you would get notifications and pop-ups from time to time that you could ignore, but you know, still kind of annoying, telling you, oh, enable BitLocker encryption, oh, make your device more secure, oh, use, use our heckin' <laughs> proprietary encryption. Like when I was working at Geek Squad, I would occasionally 
get some clients that wanted some work done on their computer. And usually this conversation would come up during a data transfer or a backup request because of course we have to access your hard drive in order to do that work. And so while we were taking in a client's computer or worse, sometimes this conversation would happen over the phone after we had checked in the client's computer and, and started doing some work on it, we would encounter the infamous BitLocker recovery key prompt. And when we ask the client for that recovery key so that we can continue doing our work, they would say that they didn't know what it was. They didn't know anything about BitLocker. And I mean, that's not surprising. Well, not knowing the recovery key is not surprising because it's a 48 digit numeric key. And it's not even a key that you pick yourself. It's one that Microsoft picks for you, or at least the algorithm and their proprietary full disk encryption software picks for you. And even though BitLocker or the BitLocker setup program gives you an option to print out your recovery key, most people don't do this because setting up printers is the bane of many boomers. <laughs> Uh, and they might have saved the BitLocker key to a file on their computer. This is something that a lot of people do, but of course you need that key to get into the computer at this point. So that's a nice little chicken and egg problem there. But there is a saving grace, right? By default, BitLocker will save the key to your Microsoft account. But if you've ever done tech support for Windows, you, you know what's coming next, right? You ask the client about their Microsoft account. They say, what Microsoft account? <laughs> and now you gotta go through the process of helping them discover that they do in fact have a Microsoft account. Usually it's associated with an Outlook email of some kind. And sometimes finding that uh, can be pretty easy because with Geek Squad, we ask people for their email when they're checking in a computer, but may, maybe they didn't give you that Outlook email and, and now we gotta do a little bit of soul searching to figure out that uh, we have a Microsoft account and it creates a real headache for everyone that's involved in this process to get that recovery key to continue doing the work. And this has happened a number of times just in my experience and I'm sure people can say, I mean, comment below if you've run into this kind of experience before in your professional life or when helping a family member with some tech support. See, the thing is, BitLocker only prompts you for the recovery key in certain circumstances. Like if you try to access the startup menu or you try to access the BIOS um, for updating the firmware or, or a number of other maintenance related tasks. That's when BitLocker pops up, but your average Windows user probably isn't going to do something that would prompt the BitLocker recovery key to, um, to pop up, which is why so many people discover that they have BitLocker enabled on their PC when a computer tech is asking them for the recovery key. And if you can't provide that recovery key, then the work can't be done on your PC, but even worse, you won't be able to use your computer either until the computer gets reset, which means you lose all your data on it if you don't have a backup, or at the very least, if you do have a backup, you're gonna have some downtime while you restore from that backup. So I'm predicting that this is going to result in data loss for a lot of people. I mean, I've already seen it happen, <laughs> and that was when BitLocker was optional and people had to at least kind of go out of their way a bit by checking a box or clicking through a few screens when Microsoft asked them to set up BitLocker to have some heckin' security. Now, the good news is it's still possible to do a Windows 11 installation without BitLocker by opening the command prompt during installation. You do that by pressing Shift and F10 at the same time and then type in reg edit to open up the registry editor. And you have to navigate to H key, local machine, system, current control set, control, bit locker. Okay, you have to go into this sub key. 
you want to right click inside of this empty area here, uh, go into the context menu and select a new D word 32 bit value. And we're going to name it prevent device encryption. And we're going to set its uh, value to true or to one in this case, and then press OK. And then we can close our registry editor. Great. Well, this might be a bit of a daunting task to a lot of Windows users who <laughs> can't just have their grandkids install Windows 11 for them. And so my advice, since it's most likely the grandkids who are gonna be watching this video in the first place, is to offer the help to your boomers or whoever the less tech savvy Windows users in your life are to avoid BitLocker if they don't need it, okay? Because I mean, those of you out there, you know who you are, the people who are the tech support for your family. It's probably gonna be better for you to just disable this than to run into a situation where you got to try to help them <laughs> recover their BitLocker key, okay? I've gone through this pain enough that I can tell you it's, it's, it's a very tedious process to try to recover that key. So yeah, if you could do something about it and just go through that little process I did there to prevent it, um, yeah, it'll hopefully make your life a whole lot easier. So make sure you like and share this video so that it can hopefully find the people that need it or ideally embarrass Microsoft enough into just scrapping this ridiculous feature and help support my channel by shopping on based.win. Get yourself some awesome merch or accessories for your phone or laptop and save 10% at checkout by paying in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.